Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how you can install a washing machine into a tiny kitchen. As a bit of background, this is our apartment in Italy. We bought it at a really good price uh, quite a few years ago and we refurbished it ourselves. When I say ourselves, I mean myself and my wife Rossella. We did everything. Plumbing, rewiring, not to all down, plastering, um, just everything. Fitted the boiler uh, and, and all the radiators. We did just the whole apartment ourselves. It was a, a great deal of hard work, but it paid off. We've got a nice place to live and our mortgage is teeny, almost as small as our kitchen. So if I show you the kitchen now, here we are. This is it. So it's kind of really, really small. Um, now, when we were doing the place up, we considered knocking this wall down, which would have opened up the, uh, the living room into the kitchen. But we can't do that because these are flues. So behind here, uh, this is a fourth floor apartment uh, without a lift, I might add. So today there's going to be a lot of <laughs> huffing and puffing to get the washing machine out and the washer dryer in. Anyway, uh, so the flues here come down from the bottom floor and go all the way up to the roof, so we can't knock that down. Uh, and hence we've got the tiny little kitchen. So the reason that I'm here today is because this is where we get to dry our clothes. This tiny, tiny little balcony. I think they must have had one bag of cement left when they finished building these apartments. So they thought, oh, why not build a little balcony? So that's what we've got, that's where we dry our clothes. As you can see, it's snowing quite heavily, so it's not great clothes drying weather. And we have just had a new baby. So that means the washing machine is on approximately 467 times each week. And we need to get stuff dried. So we have got a washer dryer, as opposed to just the washing machine which we had before. Fortunately, I anticipated this. When we fitted this kitchen, I thought ahead and I thought, well, one day we're gonna to have to change the washing machine and we didn't want to fit it here. We didn't want to walk into the kitchen or be sitting in the living room and be looking at a washing machine. We wanted to put it in the corner over there. Uh, but the problem with that is this kitchen is so tiny that, now if I stand here, there you go. Basically, it's tiny. So the, the uh, space between the wall here and the kitchen is so small that it would not be possible to get a washing machine in or out without dismantling the whole kitchen, taking it all apart and refitting afterwards. That's not very convenient. So, as I say, I anticipated that and what I did was I made a hole in the wall here. That's a false wall. And if I show you where that goes to, this is our corridor. So I made this little false wall and behind here there's still a hole in the wall. So I just need to take this panel off. And we also use this, obviously, for putting this electronic stuff on there, the Wi-Fi router, etc. Now, uh, how did I get this washing machine in there? Obviously, I put it through the hole. Then we have the plumbing, which is over here. And it comes from there. So you'll see how I easily got the plumbing to get from there to there as we go through the rest of the video. Now, let's get started on the job, and you'll see exactly how I did this and how potentially you can do this if you've got a tiny kitchen. You know, maybe you're planning on moving to Tokyo or Lilliput. Who knows? But if you need to fit a washing machine in a tiny kitchen, this is how you can do it. This is the original washing machine. This is being replaced by the washer dryer. So the first thing that I need to do is disconnect the plumbing. Now that's really easy because I came up with a little innovative solution for getting the plumbing from here to the sink. I'll show you that now. Here we are then. So all I did was I put a PVC pipe into the wall running from here to the corner with a, an incline so that the water runs downwards, of course. And then all I did was use that as a conduit and I passed through two of these flexible pipes, uh, one of which came with the washing machine, one which I added. So I just plugged one into the other one and then I'll just uh, I'll disconnect this now and then we can pull that through to the other corner of the kitchen. empty the water out. I had placed a bucket there beforehand so that's not a problem. Now I just need to disconnect this fitting, pull it out from the hose which will be rather stuck. This just slides in and out through the PVC pipe that I fitted as a conduit so I can just go in the corner of the kitchen 
and I'll pull through those flexible pipes and they'll come out the other end. Little tip here, you can use uh, aluminium foil to make little sliders which you can put underneath the feet of the washing machine and that'll stop it from, it'll make it easier to slide and stop it from scratching your floor. See what I mean about it being a small kitchen? Fortunately, this is relatively easy anyway. Ta-da! I'm now going to remove this panel and then we'll have the hole in the wall through which we can get the washing machine out. There's just a piece of angle there and then there are three screws on each side which are not visible thanks to that 90 degree PVC angle. Just ignore the dust. What dust? Now behind here I put some uh, fiberglass insulation inside some plastic just to reduce the, uh, the amount of noise coming through this hole and this is a panel of plasterboard or drywall for our American cousins. So I just need to remove this screw and then this panel will move away. I can get rid of the fiberglass and then we can pull out the washing machine. You'll be very pleased to know that I tidied these cables later in the job. By the way, in case anybody's interested, these brackets are homemade and I've got some plastic in the garage. It's really easy to cut and it's very handy because for jobs like this where you need something quickly, you can just make things up uh, without having to go to the shop. So you cut the size that you need and then you can heat these and bend them. So I heat, heat them with a heat gun or a, whatever you've got. Then you can bend them 90 degrees and then when it cools down... <coughs> Hurrah! That's the cavalry arrived to help me move the washing machine. That's my father-in-law and brother-in-law. Um, so I shall answer that. Anyway, yeah, so you can bend that into position. When it cools down it stays in the shape that you want and you can use that for doing all sorts of jobs. Very handy tip. Ciao! We now need to disconnect the water supply, which is really easy. This is just a flexible pipe which comes out of the wall and it has a stopcock. So we just turn that a quarter of a turn. The water's now turned off. And when I unscrew this, then that will be the old washing machine completely out. I'm just gonna get the bucket to collect the water when I do this. Okay, that's the old washing machine disconnected and that is now ready to take down uh, four floors of stairs and uh, we'll be bringing the new one up. Just before we do that I just wanted to show you this. This is the other end of the PVC pipe and uh, as I explained before you just get an extra section of flexible pipe and you can connect the two together. That's a waterproof seal. I, I taped them too so that when I pull it out in the future like I just did then they stay connected together and then you can just push it in here and it comes out of the other side next to your sink. Next on the new washing machine, or in this case, washer dryer, then you need to remove the transport bolts from the back. And basically, it's pretty much the same on any washing machine. These have been fitted to make sure that the washing machine doesn't shake itself to death during transport. And these need to come out, and then in their place, there are just some blanks that go in there to fill the holes. I'm just making some more of the little tin foil slider pads. Aluminium foil, I believe our American friends call it tin foil. Actually, it's a silly thing to call it, isn't it? Because it's not made of tin. 
think it may have been about a thousand years ago. But um, it's not been for a long time, so there we are. Anyway, so there are the first two. I've got another two to do on either side, and then we'll be ready to push this into position. So I've connected the water supply hose to the back of the washing machine. As you can see, really easy with the aluminium foil under the feet. And provided you haven't left any grit on the floor, then you won't scratch your floor either. Before we push this through the hole, I'm just going to connect these two sections of drain hose together. Um, so it's just a case of putting one inside the other. It's a very tight fit, um, so I'm going to be using some uh, conditioner, hair conditioner, to lubricate the, uh, the pipe. Now you may have other kinds of lubricant lying around in your house and if that's the case then you know I'm not judging you, that's fine. You can use whatever you like, I'm just going to use some hair conditioner because as you can tell I take my hair care very seriously. So that's going in there. Fan dabby dozy. So that's a watertight seal now. I'm going to tape it though because um, I don't want this, if in the future I ever have to change a washing machine again, I hope I don't have to to be honest, but if I do while I'm pulling this through I don't want it to become detached inside my uh, conduit style water pipe. I was pretending I wasn't really pulling that very hard, but that's good. Okay, so we, before we come any further, I just wanted to bang my head first and then uh, connect the water supply. I'm going to do that now. There we go. Again, that's just hand tight. And I'm just going to open that water supply now, open the quarter turn valve and just check for leaks as I'm pushing this back into position. I'm also going to plug in the uh, power cord now while I can see what I'm doing. Ooh, it's alive! It's alive! It's alive! Again, while I've got some room, I'm just going to put the drain hose into position. I'm going to pass it through the pipe, through to the sink. Um, okay, uh, I got one. Okay. There we go, that's just hand tight on there. Now probably some of you will be thinking you need a jubilee clip on that or a hose clamp on that or it's going to leak. Well, the last one was on there for what, seven years row, something like that. and. Uh, it didn't leak, so... Okay, final check for leaks there and all good. So I'm going to push this back into position now. Okay, at the bottom of the washing machine there are four adjustable feet and they just screw in, screw out. And um, if your washing machine, once you start to use it, well, you can check before you start using it. Make sure it feels nice and solid. That's good. If it isn't, you can adjust the feet and then it, it should sit really solid. And even with a full load, when it's spinning, you shouldn't have it dancing around. You shouldn't have to wedge anything above it to keep it in position. If it's well balanced on the feet, then that should be hot to trot. Okay, we're following the instructions here because everybody does that, don't they? But anyway, so we are following the instructions. Um, when you've installed the washing machine or washer dryer, then there's a kind of pre-wash that you can do 
which clears out all the oils and residual stuff in the factory. So that's what we're doing now. So it's just a little bit of, uh, of washing liquid. And you can see how incredibly, amazingly user-friendly it is to have a worktop on top. <laughs> it's great. But, you know, you can still do it. And uh, it means that we've got extra working space here and in a kitchen the size of a postage stamp. That is quite useful. So there we go. And now we press... It's these two, isn't it? Yeah, um, these two, yeah. Yeah, five second. Two, three, four. There we go. And obviously while this is running, I'm going to be checking to make sure we haven't got any leaks and uh, no fires, you know, all that sort of stuff. Although if you've got a fire and a leak, it could actually work out quite well, couldn't it? Because it could cancel each other out. Sorry, I'm looking at Rosella behind the camera there. Uh, if you thought I was going bog-eyed, that's what I was doing. Anyway, so there we go. Ace! There we are then, that's that. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> watching, watching, get it? Yeah, never mind. Anyway, uh, that's baby crying there, baby Emma, bless her. So um, we've got other things to do now. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Before you leave, check out the other videos on my channel. Uh, they're nearly all helpful. They're basically videos to help people out to do different things. And they're quite random, as you may have guessed from my channel name. I like to not limit myself to any particular subject because I kind of do a bit of everything. So why not make videos about a bit of everything as well? That's the way I look at it. Anyway, again, thank you for watching. If you've got any comments, leave them in the comment section below and I look forward to reading them. And I will look forward to seeing you in another video in the future. So don't forget to subscribe. Okay, uh, see you next time. And until then, don't forget, love life.